Hi, I'm Allie Bierman, your guide to demystifying your world, and I welcome you to a very special Wisdom Shares edition of Let's Get Metaphysical, Connecting Heart and Mind. How do you change your past? Because you actually can, and it actually not only isn't hard, but it changes your whole life. And how do I know this? Because I did this for myself many, many, many years ago. And oh man, it was so fantastic because my whole life changed. Honestly, it was the equivalent of if I had gone back and just rewritten my past. And what's our past? We make up our past from our stories about how we interpreted events that happen. And when you listen to your story and you're telling your story over and over again for decades, for many years, that's how you get locked in to a past that you actually believe. And what you believe has nothing to do with the reality that actually happened. It's what you believe. Tell yourself something often enough and you believe it. And the worst part of that is you also start to think it's true, which of course it isn't because it's all stuff you make up. Everything about your past is what you make up. How are you making it up? Events happen. You decide, you choose how to interpret why those events happened as they do and what they mean for you. You know, a hundred different people witnessing an event are going to give you a hundred different versions, a hundred different variations, a hundred different stories of what happened. That's why eyewitness testimony isn't considered reliable the way it was once upon a time. So what is this method that I figured out? Well, actually, the origin of it came from, I'm sorry, I don't remember his name because it would have been, golly gee, very many years ago when I lived in a small town in Virginia called Culpeper, and I was seeing this magnificent kinesiologist who was also a chiropractor and an extremely spiritual person, and he taught me you ready? Because this is the big secret. And then I'll tell you where to go with it to make it work for you. He said, when people do things for you, they're not, well, that's the point. He said, nobody does anything to you. They're doing it for you. And therefore, if you go back and you look at all the times you thought people hurt you, there's another way to look at it. Now, I'm an ordained minister, and I created a whole ceremony, and this is the first step of a ceremony. And it actually, if you're really going to do it thoroughly, if you're serious about changing your whole life, it will take you a couple of days to do a thorough and complete job. And the more complete the job is, the more you're rewriting your history and the more you can enjoy your life because quite literally you're changing your past. Here's how you do that. Make a list. This is the one that the step that you might want to take a few days to actually do this. Make a list of every person all across your life, as far back as you can remember, back when you were a little kid. And I know a whole lot of the memories aren't in your conscious awareness, but make a list of everybody who ever did 
or said anything that hurt you. And every incident where they did or said something that hurt you. And I say, take a few days to do this, because if you're like me at the time I did it, my list was like three pages long. So in other words, start the list today. Don't put it off. Why would you put it off? You're changing your life. You're going to be so much happier, not just happier, but healthier, because you can get rid of all this garbage. And it literally is garbage. Because when you tell yourself stupid stuff that hurts you, they're stories. They're not real. So why would you live in your stories? So <clears throat> you have your list. And then over the next couple of days, just keep adding to your list because I guarantee you're going to have a long list. And for each person, you might have a whole bunch of incidents. And you don't have to say, well, here's the person and list them all right there. Wherever it comes up in your memory, in your accessing, in your awareness, that's where you write it on the list. So you do this for a few days. Now, normally, if I were working with you, I would just tell you, do that one step. If you've worked with me, you notice that I do a lot of things where I tell you do this one step and wait before you go on to the next step. And that's not going to work right here, right now, because I'm going to give you all the steps. And I'm going to trust you to do each step totally and fully before you go on to the next step. So step one, list everything and every incident that hurt you all across your life. And just for expanding your awareness, when I, I've had more than one client who had really severe candida, okay, I mean, really severe candida. And the whole trail of things that hurt that led to the candida actually manifesting in their lives when they're in their 30s and their 40s was a, a lifetime starting when they were in the womb when their mothers didn't want them. That meant their moms were releasing chemicals in utero, sending them messages that they weren't welcome. And I expect that at some point in their lives, their mothers actually voiced that to them, but it wouldn't have to be actually voiced because the chemistry would have been not feel good chemicals. You wouldn't have the beautiful endorphins flowing that I know I get when I work out, which is why I love to work out. So that's the first step. It will be a long list unless you live on another planet or just dropped in here. The next step, go back one by one, incident by incident. You ready? It, now, don't go away when I tell you this. What you're going to go incident by incident, and you're going to say thank you. Say what? You're going to thank the person for what they did or didn't do, said, or what they didn't say that you interpreted as hurtful to you. And you can go through your whole list and just flat out, don't think about anything else, don't evaluate anything, just say thank you. Maybe it will be easy and maybe it'll be like, what are you crazy? Why in the world would I thank them? Well, here's step three. And I guess you could, could blend it in with step two, 
Why are you saying thank you? Look at your life. Realize what they did or didn't do, said or didn't say, that you interpreted. It is your interpretation as hurtful. But they're in your life to assist your growth, to assist your education here in Earth School. Nobody shows up in your life by accident. Everything that happens in your life is a gift. How in the world do you see it as a gift? Here's the other part. This is what you're thanking them for. Who did you get to become because of that action you saw as hurting you? What did you have to change in the way you live your life moment to moment because of that very specific incident? And there'll be a different thing. Might be a slight variation, but there's going to be a different reason that that incident happened for you, not to, excuse me, not to you, but for you, so you could grow. Because when you grow, you get to change. Now, to give you something to look forward to, when I did this program originally very many years ago, the result was holy crow. That's a common expression for me, holy crow. I don't know what it means. But anyway, I said, holy crow, my whole life is different. All of those things, it wasn't about hurting me. I got to become independent. I got to become somebody who realizes, gee, I was making up stories that weren't even real. I got to change in so many, many ways because I thank them for giving me that opportunity. Now, here's the thing, people will always, not sometimes, but always appear in your life seeming to challenge you because the universe is guiding them. It's called divine timing because you're ready because you're ready to make the change and you're not making the change even though the universe is talking to you all the time even though your guides and your angels are telling you hey if you make this change your whole world's going to be different you're going to be healthier you're going to be happier you're going to be more successful and you're just not paying attention so the universe says okay i'm gonna move somebody into your world they're going to behave in a way that's going to draw some attention from you. And you get to choose whether it's hurtful to you or whether it's a wake up call. <laughs> because that's what it is. It's just a wake up call to assist your growth. I know when I recognize that I'm having a real issue and just because of what happened in my life there are some major health challenges and i'll ask the universe why are all these things happening and the universe will come back with the answer so you could know that you've been causing the blocks so you don't see your true happiness because the bottom line is your natural state, who you are and how you are, is true happiness. And if you're not in a place where you're recognizing that, experiencing that, feeling that, living in true happiness, it's because you've got blocks. And so the universe has to put all these people and all these incidents in your path. Say, yo, 
hello, wake up, it's your choice. You can get rid of the stuff that you decided, nobody else decided it, you decided this stuff hurts you. Now, yes, there are things that happen in life and they could be really physical things. And yes, there could be really physical pain. And trust me, if you know my story and you know the nerve damage and what it's done inside me, yeah, some things really hurt and some things are really scary. And I don't look at them as causes of unhappiness. I'll say that again. When I choke on my own saliva, when I can't swallow water, when I can't swallow food, when my heart goes into arrhythmia, I can choose to say, dang, this is a crappy way to feel. Or I can say, okay, universe, I know this is happening for a reason. And I have a choice about how to live in each moment. And I know that no matter what's going on, I know what true happiness is. I live in true happiness. And when these momentary episodes happen and they're scary and sometimes it hurts, I don't stay stuck there. Why would I do that? Why would I stay stuck? Because you know what happens? Okay, here's the other piece of what I've been telling you so far. If you find yourself resisting, if you're resisting a pain, whether it's emotional or whether it's physical, you, you've heard of Carl Jung, the psychiatrist who said what you resist persists. That's what the universe is doing. So when you have your list of people that did, didn't do, said, didn't say things that you interpreted, that you believe, that you've told yourself so many times you see it as fact, you're choosing to keep a blockade up. You're choosing to resist it when you want to get rid of something, when you want to fix something. That's called resistance. And what happens, resistance, think of it as stickiness. And it sticks to you and <laughs> what you're resisting, what you want to push away. So when you can go through your list and you can say, thank you, and this is who I get to become, and this is how I get to behave. And I don't have to live in that cruddy story anymore that keeps me stuck. That's when your life changes. That's when your past literally changes. And how do you do that? This is going to sound really counterintuitive. I've done it myself, so I know this is what you do to make the difference for you. You welcome it. You go through it. That's not easy to do when it's a physical pain or an emotional pain or a spiritual challenge. On the other hand, if you're telling yourself it's not easy to do, you might just be stopping yourself from doing it. And that's a choice you make. And therefore you're going to continue. It's going to persist because you're resisting it. When I went through some stuff, some painful stuff, some scary stuff in the last few months, what did I do? I just reminded myself, Am I that pain or that scary experience? Or am I just the one experiencing it? I didn't say, go away. Some of it's really scary. Some of it feels 
so horrible and I hope you never know <laughs> these kinds of things and I learned it by accepting it instead of pushing it away it's not suffering when I tell you suffering's a choice I'm coming from a place of real experience so reframe everything it's how you look at it when you reframe actions done by other people as gifts when you figure out who you got to become what behaviors what stories what actions you got to change that would not not in any way shape or form have been a conscious choice for you to make without being pushed that's when you accept it you move through it and it might come back but it won't come back with the same intensity so you move through it again by allowing it because when you stop resisting it doesn't have to persist any more and that's that's how you get to live in true happiness bad things happen in everybody's life everybody everybody gets hurt or somebody they know gets hurt or sick or they move away or they lose, lose a job or you move away from the people you love and care about people die or actually nobody ever dies people transition to the next plane things happen that leave us feeling less than thrilled when you live in true happiness you don't stay stuck there you bounce back and you bounce back quickly and it doesn't mean you don't experience sadness or hurt or physical or emotional pain it just means you see the universe is gifting you the opportunity to grow through something and everything that you do in your life it's a choice that you're making what story are you choosing to live in because heck you made up the story you've been telling yourself you can make up a new story Let's take a quick sponsor break. And today's show is brought to you by Audible. Over at Audible, you will find not just audiobooks, but courses, magazines, podcasts. You'll find ours over there. And there's just so much fun stuff to explore. Audible is giving you a free trial to spend 30 days looking around at everything. And it also includes downloading a free audiobook that you get to keep if for some reason you don't want to continue with Audible. I've been a member for many years. I have a huge library and the book that I'm urging you to read right now or to listen to or both as I do is G. Wallace's book, Born, Giving Birth to a new you. And in fact, that book has so dramatically changed my life and continues to change my life because I read some of it and or listen to some of it every single day because every day a new change occurs. I'm using that book to launch our brand new book club. So you'll find your free trial over at audibletrial.com forward slash a-l-i-t-l-c and the link is in the show notes so yes you're in charge of your life yes you're in charge of your happiness or the lack of it and yes changing your past is a very real possibility i know because i did it and when i look back at my past Oh my gosh, 
because I had a lot of cruddy experiences. I had a lot of people telling me lies in my life. And I got to be somebody who didn't have to buy into those stories anymore. And I got to be somebody who is more discerning about what I'm going to believe when somebody tells me or what I'm going to take out of their behaviors or my expectations. Oh, expectations that'll get you, that'll always get you stuck because you're having an expectation of how somebody else is going to behave or even behave toward you. You don't control how other people behave. You might want to, you might think you do, you might try to, but bottom line is a reality. You can't, but oh man, you control you. You control the stories you tell yourself. You tell yourself stories about events. You tell yourself about people. You're judging people. What do you think's happening when you're judging people? Well, one thing, you can't judge somebody for having a certain behavior unless you have that behavior within you. I'll say that again. If you think somebody's selfish, then there's a part of you that's sometimes putting out behaviors, actions that somebody else might interpret. That's the key word, interpret, as a selfish behavior. If you witness somebody in your life who's full of anger, well, you can't know the anger unless it's already inside you. It doesn't mean you're somebody who has outbursts, but there's still some inside you that might at some point come out. And here's just something else to consider. Because hurt is somebody's interpretation of a behavior or somebody's judgment, uh, the story they're making up about who you are or why you do what you do, you probably hurt other people by what you do or don't do and what you say or don't say, and you're not trying to do it. Oh, sure, there'll be people in your life who do it intentionally. But if you don't accept it, as part of your world, it's not going to hurt you. It can't. And I learned that in my own life by not participating in arguments, by not participating when somebody was in an angry place. And you can too. I thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being here today. Oh, and here's something I really, really, really want to share with you. I'm starting a book club. And the first book that we're studying is D. Wallace's Born. What's it called? The subtitle is Giving Birth to a New You. Now, when The Secret came out, however many gazillion years ago, it came out. I watched it every day for 90 days. I don't know how many weeks or probably months ago that I bought these book. I listen to at least parts of it or read because I have both the audiobook and the print book every single day because you know what? Every single day, I'm a new me. I'm in a different place. I see something every single day in that book that I never saw before. That's why I've dramatically changed my life and I continue to, which really surprises me because I teach that same stuff. And you've probably heard the phrase, you teach what you most want to learn. And I've been teaching it for so long. I did not realize some really key places where I was stuck. 
So send me a message, a messenger, or a DM, or uh, thrive with Allie at gmail.com if you want to get into the book club. Because I love being in book clubs. I've been in many, many book clubs, but my favorite were the spiritual ones. In fact, the very first book club I ever joined, it was called a for this come as you are light being book club and we read channel books and that was my introduction into the whole spiritual realm and i'm grateful for that and not everybody wants to be called a light being or what the heck does that mean anyway so we're just doing the book club and I call it Let's Get Metaphysical Book Club. Thank you again for being here. Please do the steps. Start at the beginning of today's talk. Because it will change your life. It will change your world. When I look back on what I thought was a really hurtful childhood and it's not anymore. That's pretty danged good, happy, pleasant, and I'm ever so grateful. And I want to be really sure you remember to join our Facebook group for special offers, for updates, for information. And also, you'll also find the link to our website where you can find every podcast episode that we've shared and you will find them both in audio and in video. And it's also a great place, an easy way to leave a review. We really appreciate your sharing. And I look forward to being here with you next week. I remind you to enjoy every moment because nothing in your life happens outside of you. You don't hear anything outside of your body. You don't see anything outside of your body. You don't taste or smell or touch anything except sensing it inside your body. So that's capital I-N-J-O-Y. Every moment I will catch you here next week.